Getting to know interim head coach Antonio Pierce. You'll hear from a guy that played with him, coached with him, and well, is just about a best friend of his. That plus a whole lot more comes up on Tuesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, December 5th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. You ought to win as a Raider. Just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders Podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. To get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available, of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, appreciate it. Appreciate you in a major way. You made the show grow, and my man Ari has made the show grow. If it wasn't for Ari, we wouldn't be on YouTube each and every day, but he takes a lot of pride in making sure we not only are on YouTube, but we're looking good and we're sounding good. So big shout out to my guy Ari. Does a great job each and every day. You can check him out on Twitter at Ari Produces. You can hit me up as well at your boy Q254. And normally we got the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line wide open like some old school TV antennas at 707-654-4693. No calls or texts coming up on today's show. And that's because got a real special interview coming up on the show that I did on Monday on Raider Nation Radio 920 Unnecessary Roughness, my radio show. Really excited about this conversation and really excited to be able to share it with you here on the podcast, and that's with LeVar Arrington. Uh, he's part of Fox Sports Radio now, uh, played in the NFL for a long time, linebacker, played in Washington, played in New York, played next to and with Coach uh, Antonio Pierce, interim coach Antonio Pierce, and is a really good friend of his. And I'll have to tell you the story about how the interview even came about, but really good, insightful stuff on Antonio Pierce, what he brings to the table and what he could potentially bring to the table for the long term. So you'll hear that conversation coming up in segment number two and three. Here in segment number one, little news and notes, really kind of recap of Monday's show and another thought that I had when it comes to offseason priorities and what the Raiders could potentially do moving forward. We'll get to that after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So off top, the Raiders again coming off their bye week, week 13, headed into week 14. All 13 weeks are now in the books, right? Monday night football came to a close. We saw the Cincinnati Bengals top the Jacksonville Jaguars. I was shocked as hell that Cincinnati was able to win that game. Uh, It was really bad to see Trevor Lawrence go down with some kind of ankle injury. Hopefully it's not very bad, but uh, Cincinnati tops uh, Jacksonville 34-31 and Uh, Now the AFC is just kind of that much more jumbled up as far as the playoffs go. And look, there's five games left for the silver and black. They're not mathematically out of it, but it's basically on life support. They've got a lot of work to do to try to make a push for the playoffs. And I'm not saying that they're going to do it. I'm not saying that they're not going to do it, but there's a lot of work that they've got to do. After 13 weeks, the Raiders are sitting in 13th in the AFC. The top seven make it to the playoffs. The only teams behind the Raiders are the Jets at 14, Titans at 15, and the Patriots at 16. And we all know the Patriots have given up on the season. They're aiming for that number one spot in the 2024 draft. The good thing for the Raiders, four out of five games left are with AFC teams. So as we saw Monday Night Football with Cincinnati over Jacksonville, anything's possible. Right, We've seen uh, the Houston Texans on Sunday beat the Denver Broncos, who were the hottest team in football for a while. Uh, We saw Green Bay top Kansas City Sunday night football. And I know Green Bay is in the NFC, but you get the gist. You're like, Kansas City is the AFC team. So anything's possible. There's a reason why they play the games. But again, after 13 weeks, the Raiders are currently sitting in 13th out of 16 potential teams in the AFC. So if they're going to make a playoff push, Well, they got to get cooking starting this week against the Minnesota Vikings. That's the only NFC team they play. The rest of the way, it's all AFC opponents. Now, I wanted to also focus in on the offseason priorities. It's something that I talked about on Monday's show. I had four priorities that I thought that the Raiders should really focus in on and figure out. The first one is really the one I want to focus in on. Aiden O'Connell, is he the guy or isn't he the guy? Decide if you're going to move forward with him. If not, make sure you go get your guy. The other ones, upgrade the offensive line bring in a playmaker or two defensively, and what to do with Josh Jacobs. Are you going to bring him back next year? Are you going to open up the pocketbook and decide that this is the way to go, bring J.J. back? I would hope they do that, but that's not guaranteed because we know the state of the running back position and how much teams aren't willing to pay running backs. But I want to go back to number one. And the reason I want to do that is because there's another alternative that the Raiders could do when it comes to Aiden O'Connell. They could say, 
that they've seen enough from him this year, and they've seen enough throws that make you say, yeah, that's a really good NFL throw. Yeah, he could really get the job done. They have might have seen enough plays, and by the time this next five weeks are over, they may go and say, you know what, he's done enough to warrant some more evaluation. So they could decide, we're going to go into the offseason, we're going to attack it, we're going to try to build up the offensive line, we're going to try to bring in some playmakers defensively, we're going to figure out the running back position. We're going to do everything we can to build up the team around Aiden O'Connell, give him the full offseason, give him the full training camp where he's QB1 with nobody uh, you know, breathing down his neck or nobody in front of him, make him the priority, give him whatever playbook is going to be in place, whoever the coach is going to be, whoever the offensive coordinator is going to be, give him that one-on-one opportunity and that, like I said, QB1 opportunity and see what he can do. The whole time... They still have the rest of the team built, right? If everything goes well, free agency, the draft, all that good stuff goes well. And then they say, I know that there's a lot of great quarterbacks potentially in this draft, but if Aiden O'Connell's not our guy, then we go into the next draft and do everything we have to, whether that's trade up, trade back, whatever the case is, to go get the guy that we believe. Again, there's a lot of really good quarterbacks in this upcoming draft, so that's why I made a priority like, okay, decide who's your guy, who's not your guy. If not, go get him. But it's another approach they could take. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen, but it's another approach and it's another way of thinking of what the Raiders could do. Again, I still believe upgrading the offensive line is a priority. I believe bringing in a playmaker or two defensively is definitely a priority. And obviously, with Josh Jacobs only having the one-year deal, you've got to figure out what you're going to do with him moving forward. But just another option that the Raiders could, uh, you know, or approach that they could take to the offseason is deciding that Aiden makes just enough good throws that they want to see more from him and haven't made a full judgment on him. Remember, his contract is very low. He's a fourth-round pick, so it's not like he's getting paid a whole lot of money. It's not going to cost you a bunch, and it's not going to cost you any draft capital to try to trade up. So it gives you at least the opportunity to try to build up the team if that's the approach that they want to take. Again, that's if that's what they want to take. I think in that scenario, most likely Champ Kelly is still in place. Most likely uh, Antonio Pierce is still in place. And a lot of the staff is still in place. Now, if they go in a different direction, more than likely, in my opinion, there's probably a new head coach, a new front office guy, a new offensive coordinator, and they decide to go in whatever direction they want with, and I say in air quotes, their guys. And you know how that goes. So just another thing, just a little food for thought, something that I'm not saying is going to happen, but it's also something that I realize could potentially happen when it comes to the quarterback position. Also, as far as uh, the team, they're getting back to practice. They're not going to get back to practice till Wednesday. There is no Antonio Pierce uh, media availability until Wednesday. But today, at the Intermountain Health Performance Center, defensive coordinator Patrick Graham will be available around 11 a.m. And then interim offensive coordinator Bo Hardegree will be available right after him around 11.15. So the two coordinators will talk Today, Antonio Pierce will talk on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday will be some uh, players in the locker room open. And then Friday, Antonio Pierce will be available again. But I uh, look forward to talking to AP on Wednesday. I won't be there today for the uh, for the coordinators, only because I got a few meetings and some things I got to do around town. So I won't be able to catch up with them. But if there's anything good that they say, uh, you know, I'll obviously bring that to the table coming up on tomorrow's show. But coming up in segment number two, Part one of my interview with LeVar Arrington, former NFL linebacker of Fox Sports, uh, two pros and a cup of Joe, and does a whole lot more. And he's really good friends with Antonio Pierce. Matter of fact, spent the week in Vegas with Antonio Pierce while the Raiders were on the bye. I'll tell you about how this interview came about, let you hear part one of the interview coming up after I tell you about the title sponsor, which is Game Time. If you're wondering what Game Time is, but you're thinking about going to the game on Sunday versus the Vikings, and maybe you got some family and friends coming to town, you want to get some tickets, and you feel like that they're last-minute tickets, well, that's when Game Time comes into place. What Game Time does is it allows you to get last-minute tickets at reasonable prices, and not just to football games, not just to sporting events, but concerts, uh, comedy shows, any kind of theater events. They've got everything. Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee. Uh, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can see the view from your seat before you buy. You know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show you the total up front. You know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in second with two taps. It's just like that. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. So what do you have to do? 
right now. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, create an account, use the promo code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to jump into part one of my conversation with former long, longtime linebacker in the NFL, LeVar Arrington. He's part of Fox Sports Radio now, uh, two, two pros and a cup of joe. And it's funny, the way that this came about, uh, Anna and Rob, longtime listeners of the Locked On Raiders podcast, really good friends of myself and the wife and the family, uh, were in Vegas over the weekend, and we were hanging out with them, and we were just shooting the bull, talking some Raiders, and... Uh, Rob brought up the fact that he hears LeVar Arrington on Fox Sports Radio. Well, when he's on two pros and a cup of Joe, I'm not available to listen. It's one of our sister stations, Fox Sports Las Vegas. It's one of our sister stations, so I could listen to it. I just don't really have the opportunity to uh, because of everything that I got going on. And he started to tell me and Anna started to tell me as well about how LeVar Arrington's been kind of hinting at trouble in paradise when it comes to the Raiders well before Josh McDaniels was fired and then started talking about AP and started kind of, uh, you know, throwing little nuggets out here and there about it that made him realize that him and Antonio Pierce are really close friends. So once he told me that, uh, all of a sudden my creative wheel started started turning and I jumped on my phone, uh, you know, hit the email, tried to hit the folks up at Fox Sports. It was like, hey, you know, this is a sister station. Uh, how can I get LeVar on? And to their credit, man, they made it happen quick, fast, in a hurry. They hit me back on Sunday and said, hey, let's do this on Monday. Boom, we'll get them on the 4 o'clock hour on your show and they did there was no doubt about it no two uh, two ways about it they reached out to him he said cool let's do it uh, shot me the number boom we called him and he was on the radio show just like that so big shout out to Anna and Rob uh, for kind of giving me the info and the intel that led to this interview and I thought it was really good stuff with former linebacker in the NFL longtime linebacker in the NFL LeVar Arrington so who, here's part one of the conversation we started off talking about when AP uh, was uh, not introduced. That, that's actually part two. But start off the interview with me just talking about him being really close with Antonio Pierce. So here's part one of that conversation. I was talking over the weekend with some of my friends, and they were talking about the show and how you were talking about Coach Antonio Pierce, and you guys are really close friends. And I was like, well, why didn't you tell me ahead of time? I want to get him on the show to talk about it. So I know you guys played together, but what is it about Antonio Pierce that kind of makes him go, and, and how much is he in, in, enjoying this uh, opportunity to be the head coach of the Silver and Black? I mean, who told you we were best friends? I mean, we are not close friends. I don't like that guy not one bit. I don't know why Mark Davis made this decision. It's one of the worst decisions. I've... No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I hope somebody laughed at it. Um, I did. I know, did. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, cool. Uh, we, are, we are really close friends. I, I was actually just with them um, after the Pac-12 game. And uh, we spent some time together talking and, and, and seeing, you know, what, what he's got going on. But, you know, I think what, what Mark Davis and, and the rest of the decision makers saw in Antonio Pierce is someone who is one of the most brilliant football minds that you'll, you'll come across. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a unique blend because he does have that little bit of edge and, and the little bit of roughness around the edges and and you want that you know you want you want somebody who can relate to the players but also is super super brilliant in the way that they think and you know i've been i've been around antonio pierce for a really long time since he came into the league we we go back to when he was at arizona and i was at penn state we played each other in the pigskin or the kickoff classic whatever it was called in 99 and just just knowing him through the years as a player just always was a super, super smart player, understood everybody's position, understood what everybody was trying to do, and could explain it in a way where he made everybody around him better. And so, you know, for for him to be in the position that he's in now, it, it's been a lot of hard work. You know, he started off coaching. We, You know, he was at Long Beach Poly. Mm-hmm. And I actually – I never had any aspirations of coaching, but he actually – made me believe that I could be a good coach. And I started coaching at Long Beach Poly with him. And, and, and again, as a coach, his organization, the way he ran our program in high school was that of a, a college pro program. So he's been preparing for this for a long time. 
And for it to come the way that it did, maybe not the best of circumstances, but they always say when preparation meets opportunity, uh, <laughs> you make it happen, and, and good things happen. So you guys got a good one in Antonio Pierce. Uh, he's not only a good dude, but he's, he's the type of guy that if he has a fair opportunity, he'll definitely pull in the right type of people. He told me a, t- a couple guys that he's actually looking to bring in, which – if that really happens, that is an amazing uh, addition to, to the team. Um, you, ha- you guys will have to get that from him. But, <laughs> but if, he, if he pulls together what, what it looks like he's going to pull together, he is definitely positioning this team to have the same type of feel that the teams that he played on, uh, what they look like and, and, and how they were built personnel-wise. So, you know, football is a rocket science, you, you know what I mean? Like – you you get the best players that you can get, you 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 fill them into to the positions that and the roles that they're supposed to have. They're accepting of that and you develop them and then you start to, to build a chemistry that leads to winning. And I think Antonio Pierce understands that and and brings that to what the Las Vegas Raiders have right now. Again, LeVar Arrington is our guest here on Raider Nation Radio 920 on Necessary Roughness, talking all things Coach Antonio Pierce. What is it about him that makes people want to run through a wall? And I ask you this because when he was introduced to the media, I wanted to run through a wall, and I can't run through a wall. I could put pads on. Yeah. I'm just going to hurt myself. But I wanted to get up and <laughs> run through that wall. What is it about him that does that for people and players? Well, I would I – would ask you i mean don't i i think it's because you believe like he's believable mm-hmm. you know you believe what he's saying and and the reality of it is is that he's saying what he believes he's saying what he means like he's not he's not that that fluff type of guy uh he's he's going to tell you exactly how he feels it's going to be authentic it's going to be genuine and and you just got to know that if he's telling you that we're in the trenches together and that foxhole is live and we got to we got to do it together then that's exactly what it is there there is no fluff to it there's anything to it it's just it is what it is you know when it comes to him and the coaching and you mentioned that he's a, a sharp and, and genius as far as a football mind how early on did you realize in the process that he had coach written all over him uh, you know i i think i think in getting to know him through the years you, as a player, you always say, all right, he, he's an on-field coach. Like, you mm-hmm. have those guys that are on-field coaches. Um, but when I coached with him at Long Beach Poly, I knew he – I was like, okay, he's a coach. Like, his, his – he transitioned in, into being a coach than just being a former player that was coaching football. Like, the way – you know, a coach speaks a certain type of way. They handle things a certain type of way. I was like, oh, you're a coach. Almost like I got a couple friends that are politicians now. I got a couple friends that are in in the whole private, you know, banking sector. I'm like, oh, you're a private banker now, my guy. Like, oh, you're 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 a politician now, you know. And <laughs> I got to treat you like a politician, you know. I got to treat you like you're a banker. And and with Antonio, you got to treat him like he's a coach. So it's kind of interesting because you find yourself having those moments where <laughs> it's like he's still your teammate and he's your boy. But you you respect him and and you take the approach that you realize that this is this is a man of status and a man of importance and he's earned that right and and that's how he handles things that's not that's not for for show that's not for fake he lives it he eats and sleeps and loves the game of football and and he loves the guys that he coaches and that to me the biggest you know the biggest difference in what you see in coaches in today's game. Um, that are are winning are coaches that can relate to their players. Mm-hmm. Like all these old ass coaches that think that it's the old way and like you're going to do it my way or the highway or you know you you just aren't aren't having any type of relatability to your guys. You're not going to win with them. You're not going to win with those. They're they're fossils and 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 you know you're not going to win with those types of coaches. And if you come in as the type of coach that, that the players aren't going to, to relate to, they'll shut you down, and, and they'll shut you out. And I think that you guys experienced that earlier on in this year and, and, and last season, that you just can't handle things in a manner in which it just isn't relatable. 
your success is only as good as your ability to be able to relate to, to the players that you're leading so that they can experience and, and have that success. You can't hold your success over people's heads. That's your success. You got to show them and teach them how they can be successful so y'all can have success together. And Antonio Pierce is one of those types of guys that he understands that. It's not, you know, he's got his own Super Bowl ring. Um, he doesn't have to win a Super Bowl to be validated as a Super Bowl champ. But at the same time, he understands what it takes to get to the Super Bowl as a coach, and he also understands it as a player. And, and so to, to have that type of experience and somebody as vibrant as, as Antonio Pierce is, you know, they got to steal. You know, great, great decision by them. I know I sound crazy biased towards what he is and who he is and what he represents, and I don't have a problem admitting that I'm, I'm biased because he's earned that. You know, he's earned, he's earned the, the, the type of praise that, that he receives, and to, to have this opportunity, uh, you know, present itself to him, I couldn't be happier for him, and they couldn't have gotten a, a better guy in and, and, and kind of a, a jacked-up situation. And I hope they understand that it takes time to undo some of the things that have taken place and to really, really work to engage the players and the people in the building as well to, to build a culture that, that really would represent probably what many would say uh, what the old Raiders look like with the whole win, just win, baby, win type of mentality, you know, AP has that mentality and has that mindset, and it, it, it most certainly would end up being probably uh, what the, the culture would end up being in, in Las Vegas. So there is part one of the conversation right there. Really good stuff uh, with LeVar Arrington, good friend of Antonio Pierce, and uh, he can't stop but singing the praises of AP and just what makes him tick and what makes him go and about the opportunity that he has with the silver and black and the way that he's been preparing himself for that. I thought, again, this was a really good conversation. I felt like it was going to be a good conversation, but it turned out even better than I thought it was going to be. So very excited about that. It's funny, uh, when I thought about bringing the show, the, the, the interview to the podcast, I was like, oh, I'll just grab like five or six minutes of it, bring it to the show, and uh, just let you hear a chunk of it. And then I kept listening. I was like, well, I got to put that chunk in. Well, I got to put that chunk in. Well, I got to put that chunk. I was like, well, hell, I just got to put the whole thing in. So that's what we'll do. Coming up, segment number two, you'll hear part two of the conversation. And that's when we start off talking about when AP was introduced uh, as, as the Raiders interim head coach. You'll hear that coming up in segment number three of the show after I tell you about Jace Medical. And I know we come to sports to escape from crazy realities of real life, right? We talk about that all the time. Uh, we could talk for a minute about preparing for real life. According to the FDA, check this out, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade, which is not a good thing. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if, you know, a parent needs some kind of uh, attention and is not available or a kid gets sick while a supply chain issue kept them from life-saving medication that they needed, right? That's awful. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, uh, skin infections, among others. This stuff that could happen to any of us. All you got to do is go to jacemedical.com. Complete your physician encounter. It'll be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medication will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com. Use the offer code Locked On to get $20 off your order. Again, jacemedical.com. The offer code is Locked On. It's all one word to get $20 off your order. Jace Medical. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to jump into part two of the conversation with LeVar Arrington talking all things Antonio Pierce. Kind of give you a little bit of, uh, you know, background on AP from a guy that knows him very well. Coached with them at Long Beach Poly. You know, played with them in the NFL. Is really good friends with them to this day. Was actually in Las Vegas, leaving Las Vegas, when I had an opportunity to talk to him on Monday. So just a really good uh, dude and a really good conversation. And it was really an, an exciting conversation to have on Monday. And hopefully you're enjoying uh, the part one of the conversation that you heard already 
Let's jump into part two, where I started off talking about when AP was introduced to the Raiders uh, as the interim head coach of the Silver and Black. Check it out. When he was introduced, he really made himself very favorable, and Raider Nation really fell in love with him, not only his energy, his excitement, his enthusiasm, but also his embrace for Raider Nation and what it means to be a Raider and the fact that he rolled into the stadium in an old-school Impala. And I understand there's a nice little story about the old-school Impala, the cherry red, the candy red. That's not really necessarily candy red, and you got a part in that as well. <laughs> well, we did old-school cars. I, I, I got a 63, I got a 64, I got a 60. And we just we had old-school cars, and, and we, we came from the same type of way. And I'm from Pittsburgh, but he's from you know he's from LA. He's from Compton, mm-hmm. and but we 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 related on so many different levels because that's we came from the same types of backgrounds, and 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 I mean he like I said he's authentic. Mm-hmm. Like how many co- I, if, if you look it up, it might be the first coach to drive to the to the game in an Impala. <laughs> it might be the first time that's happened. And I'm certain, if I recall his, his Impala, it does have switches. So he might have started bouncing that on y'all. You know what I mean? Like, there's a, there's a chance that he could have started hitting switches on y'all. So, I mean, that's, that's the type of guy y'all getting, though. That's right. the type of guy you're getting. And, and you know what? You either want a tooth chipper, you know, like what they got going on in Detroit. Like, same type of guy. Not, not as, and you know, I love Campbell. Love, love him to death. But that's an offensive guy talking, you know, like talking tough. Which is okay because he's obviously a, a a great motivator, a great football mind, and a tight end. So we we accept Dan Campbell talking trash and biting kneecaps and, and getting up and punching you in the mouth and all that stuff. But when AP says it, that's an LB that was really hitting people in the mouth and was really a physical player and and brought his heart and his soul to to the arena every single time that he entered it. And so that's the mentality that, that you're getting with this guy. And I, I would say it's, it's interesting. As a, as a teammate, I would play for him. I played for him. As, as, a, as a coach, I coached for him. And, and so if I were a player for him, I would play for him. If I were a coach on his coaching staff, I would coach for him. And you can't, you can't ask for anything better then that type of that type of guy that you, like you said is endearing to to the community he can relate to the community he's not going to be standoffish so you're not going to see him out and be like oh coach Pierce coach Pierce is like ah nah nah nah, nah I got you know got to go like like he's going to he you you're liable to see him at a barbecue or cookout <laughs> in and around Las Vegas as to see what's going on I mean he's just that type of dude so you guys got a good one man I, I can't I can't sing enough of his praises because he's done it the right way you know he caught a bad rap at at arizona state things shouldn't have gone down the way that they did but they did you know sometimes people see a ton of success coming and they're not ready for that success and then the wave of nil is coming and all these different things and you're seeing the same thing play out with harbaugh right now and sometimes it's time for those types of guys to go to the nfl where all those games aren't being played around, you can just go ahead and do what you need to do to try to build your team the way you need to build your team. So I hope he gets an off season. I hope he gets. I hope he gets the gig. I hope he gets an opportunity to really put his his footprint or his his his, his, his fingerprint, so to speak, um, on on this this franchise, a great franchise. I'm from Pittsburgh, so I naturally hate the the Raiders and the Cowboys. <laughs> um, but, but I know that our fan bases are the most tremendous and most amazing fan bases uh, in the history of the game. And if you understand the history of the game, you know obviously what, what the owner represented to them and, and, and what, what the coach you know, represented to them and what the players in the past have represented to them. Um, so many great, so many uh, historical people connected to the franchise he knows that, he understands that, and to get a guy that knows it and understands it to the level and the capacity that he does, um, you know, sky's the limit. I, I believe the sky's the limit trajectory-wise for him. It's exciting. It really is. Again, we're speaking with LeVar Arrington here on Radio Nation Radio 920, Necessary Roughness. Just got a couple more questions for you. We see him at the game. We see him at the practice facility. We hear him in the media sessions. Tell us something about Coach Pierce that we don't know. I don't know what you know about him. 
<laughs> well, tell, tell us what. Tell us something that you know that, about it. Tell us a good AP story then. Oh man, a- AP. I mean, he, he's a, he's a I got your six guy. Like he's got your six. That's mm-hmm. that's really all I can really I can offer. Like, and and he's not going to mince words. Um, and how he has your six. Um, I mean, he he's one of those type of guys that. He'll lay down his own life to protect the guys that he loves. Yeah. And if you didn't know that about him, then now you do. And that's why so many people respect him and admire him and, and have such, you know, genuine love for him is because he is 100% um, that type of guy. So if he tells Max Crosby that, that you know, it's us, like, let's get this, let's, let's you and I, let me and you, let's get this. Let's get right today. It's him and Max getting right today. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and, and if you, you know, you can, you can think that about some people and then it turns out that they're phony. You know, some people are good raw, raw guys. Some people can convince you, like you said, convince you to run through a wall. But, you know, they sitting there like, why are they run into that wall? <laughs> like, I know I told them to run into that wall, but damn, like, that didn't end well. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You run into that wall, you go splat, and you know who's going to be right next to you going splat with you? Antonio Pierce. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> They're going to be picking each other up off of the ground. And that's, that's, if I say there's one thing to know about him, he plays dominoes really well. So if, if you see him playing dominoes with anybody and it's for money, um, I tell them to get up. Don't, don't sit down with him playing dominoes. He's, he's pretty good. Um, he loves pit bulls. Okay. He's, he's been a pit bull dude. He loves 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 dogs. Um, great family man. Loves his family. Loves his wife. Loves his kids. Um, great great to his great to his kids and and great to his family. Um, I mean, he's just he's he's a solid dude, man. He's a solid dude. Like I'm I'm proud I'm proud of him as 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 a brother. I'm proud of him as my friend, and I'm just I'm proud of his professional development. And, and what he's been able to accomplish. He said he was setting out to be the head coach of, of a pro team, and that was many years ago. And, and he, you know, he accomplished that. So uh, for many of us, he's, he's not only all those things I said, but he's a tremendous inspiration as well. That's awesome. It really is. And, LeVar, we'll close out on this. You mentioned dominoes and, and him playing dominoes. When I play, I always say 10 to get on. Like, you don't get on the board until you score 10. And Mama Q doesn't like that. She thinks that I'm cheating. So what what it says you? What do you? Well, how do you play to get on the board? I play tonk, man. I'm a tonk. I'm a okay. tonk guy. I, I don't do I don't do them bones. I, <laughs> I I'll play around with them, but I don't I don't I don't get serious about them bones, man. Like I got jacked up fingers from grabbing on big dudes my whole life. So I'll do cards. I'll do some cards. I'll throw spades. I, I'm a I'm a hell of a, a spades partner. I'll get you your book. We'll we'll get some things popping. Um, but I don't throw the bones. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. You know. I'm not from Compton. I'm not from LA. <laughs> I didn't grow up playing dominoes. Okay. That was always something I saw in like the the Boys in the Hood movie and all that stuff. Like you know, that's that's what what my man uh, Cube hit him with. You know, Doughboy hit him with. Yep. You know what I mean? I don't. I, I used to try to learn how to do it just so I could slam it down and say domino mother effer, but. Um, other than that, you know what I mean? I ain't never really been big on the, on the bones, man. Hey, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. I'm a West Coast cat, so you know bones have been in my life uh, all my life. So uh, there, I'll have to ask AP about that when I catch up with him on Wednesday. <laughs> there you <laughs> to, go. There I'll you have go. to ask him. Hey, LeVar, fantastic stuff, man. Thanks for making a little bit of time this afternoon to join us and talk about AP. I think everyone in Raider Nation is rooting for him. I know I'm rooting for him. He's a hell of a dude and seems like a hell of a coach. And, Everything you said is backed up what I believe. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate you. Indeed. Just win, baby. Just win, baby. Win. So there was part two of the conversation right there. Uh, all things LeVar Arrington talking about Antonio Pierce. And uh, I thought that was some really good stuff. Uh, good insight, you know. And I thought he dropped some really good nuggets in the uh, interview, even going back to talking about the kind of staff that uh, AP is going to be looking to put together if he does stay on as the, as the coach full-time. And that intrigued me. That intrigued a lot of people. I started getting tweets about that way. Hold on. LeVar Arrington's dropping nuggets. And that's the thing. That's what caught 
caught, you know, Anna and Rob's uh, attention was all the nuggets that he was dropping on his radio show about AP. And even my buddy Jason was like, oh, yeah, oh, I listen to that show all the time. Yeah, he drops nuggets all the time about AP, which then I turned and looked at him. and was like, well, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you say something, you big dummy? How come you held on to it for so long without saying anything? It's like, oh, my bad. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Well, clearly, good stuff. But Anna and Rob did. They brought it to my attention, and uh, I jumped on it immediately because I thought that would be some good intel. Of course, there's a lot of rumors and reports about potential coaches that could be in play for next season, and I'm not, you know, I'm not in that line of of work. Uh, you know, I'll I'll bring to you whatever I hear that I know has some legs to it, but I'm not just gonna go ahead and find something pull it out of my backside, throw it against the wall in hopes that it sticks. Like that's, that's not what I'm going to do. And there's a lot of that that's going on right now. So uh, let's talk about the coach that's in place. That's interim head coach Antonio Pierce. And we'll see what happens over the next five weeks coming up tomorrow. We'll get back to calls and texts in segment number three. We'll have more news and notes. Of course, if uh, you know, Patrick Graham, the defensive coordinator or interim offensive co coordinator, Bo Hardegree says anything special. We'll bring that to the, the show as well. We'll have plenty of conversation as Again, it's full-on Week 14 action. Minnesota Vikings start turning our attention to what the Raiders could do at home, Allegiant Stadium, against the Vikings. So that'll come up on tomorrow's show, Raider Nation, but definitely appreciate all the feedback and uh, everyone that checks out the show, whether it's on, on YouTube or just uh, in podcast form, whatever the case may be, we definitely appreciate you. So until tomorrow, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.